Hello everyone, in this uh, lecture I'm going to be summarizing all four different types of these mechanisms when we're comparing SN1, SN2, E1, E2. How do you know when a particular reaction will do SN1, E1, SN2, and E2? So I'm going to be comparing those on the basis of your types of alcohol halides and on the basis of what type of uh, base and nucleophiles you're going to be using. So on this um, on the columns, I got these uh, types of alkyl halides, and on these rows, I get, I'm going to have different types of uh, nucleophiles and bases. When I look at these primary alkyl halides, and uh, remember, I, I did not include your methyl halides because your methyl halides are not going to be doing any elimination reactions. They're just going to be doing only SN2 mechanisms. Uh, so it's just going to be between primaries, secondaries, and tertiaries. So to start out with, remember your primaries capable of doing an uh, SN2 and E2 mechanism. As far as your tertiaries go, your tertiaries can do E2, they can do SN1, and they can also do E1. And as far as your secondaries go, they are going to be capable, capable of doing all four of them. I can have an uh, SN2, I can have an SN1, and E1 and E2. So the question is when a particular alkyl halide will be doing SN1, SN2, SN or E1 or E2. So let's focus on the types of nucleophiles or strong bases that you're going to have in those categories. So if you have a strong base that's also going to be the strong nucleophile. So remember some of the strong bases and they are also going to be acting as your strong nucleophile. So obviously, one big example is going to be any of your hydroxides. I can talk about any of your epoxide, any of your methoxides rather, and then these uh, epoxide here, OCH2, CH3. And then I can talk about uh, acetylides, or the, the one that's coming from alkenes, alkynes. Those are going to be your most common strong bases that are also going to be the strong nucleophiles. And the other thing, if you look at it, these are all actually going to be small bases. They are not really bulky. Um, and uh, when I'm looking at these uh, primary alkyl halides, when you have any of those uh, strong bases, strong nucleophiles, it's only going to be doing an SN2. And since you're doing this, uh, SN2 reaction, remember this is just going to be a backside attack and it's going to have an inversion of stereochemistry if it, there is a chiral center. Typically, if you have a primary alkyl halide, you're not going to have a chiral center unless one of the hydrogen has been replaced by deuterium. So that's also a very common thing that you may see. As far as your secondary alkyl halides go, and when we're looking at these strong bases and strong nucleophiles, you will have your E2 to be the major product, and you will have a, a little bit of, of SN2 being taken place as well. But for the most part, your E2 is going to be the major product. And sometimes, if you want to eliminate the SN2 altogether, you may want to heat up the reaction, and that way, it's only going to be doing the E2. Now, since you're doing these small bases only, you, in terms of uh, uh, reduced selectivity, it's going to be making for the most part, a Zaitsev product. And remember, it's not always Zaitsev because you may see some restrictions in terms of uh, you don't have an anti periplanar position. In that case, you may not make Zaitsev uh, product. But for the most part, that's what it likes to make in that particular case. As far as your tertiary alkyl halides go, it's only going to be doing E2 mechanism. There's no SN2. Remember, I don't really have any SN2 for the tertiaries there. So it's only E2, and it's only it's going to be doing the Zaitsev product, which is the most substituted product for that condition. Now, the second, if you have a strong base but a weak nucleophile. Now, there are going to be times when you're going to have strong bases, but they are going to be your weak nucleophiles. And uh, typically, example is going to be your hydride is one of them, H minus, which obviously coming from either NaH, KH, LiH, and stuff like those. And then you can have um, the other category is going to be the DBU, DBN, LDA, 
and then you can also have turn butoxide. Uh, the difference between the first one I have written there is this is going to be your small strong base and these are your bulky bases. So it would matter what type of uh, alkene you would get if you're using this hydride. Hydride is not very commonly used, but that doesn't necessarily mean you would not see it at all. As when you doing this with primary alkyl halides, remember these guys are weak nucleophiles and these guys are not going to be liking to act as a nucleophile. So as a result, even with primary alkyl halides, in this case, it's going to be doing E2 elimination because I don't really have any SN1 or E1 for these primary alkyl halides. So it's only going to be doing E2 uh, elimination and uh, you don't really have any options of doing an Azitsef or even uh, the Hoffman because there's only going to be one beta proton in case of primary alkyl halide. So you don't have to really worry about, you know, multiple different uh, types of beta protons in case of primary alkyl halides. Now, when we're looking at your secondary alkyl halides, it's primarily going to be doing an E2. And since we're doing an E2 here, and keep in mind, if you're using the small base, something like H minus, the other typical base that could be used here would be the NH2 minus as well. So also keep that in mind. So if you're using this small base, this is going to be doing the Zytsev. It's going to be making the Zytsev product, which is going to be the most substituted alkene. And uh, if you're doing these bulky bases, these bulky bases are also going to be making, uh, obviously doing the E2, but they are going to be favoring the formation of Hoffman alkene, which is going to be your least substituted alkene. Okay, and as far as your tertiary go, well, obviously, I don't, I can't really have an SN1 and E1 there, so it's going to be the E2 again, and your criteria are actually going to be the same, so what I'm going to just do, I'm just going to try to copy that. Let's see if I can do that, hopefully. So it's pretty much going to be the same if you have a small base, uh, small strong base, it's going to be doing the Zytsev, just like in case of these uh, strong base, strong nucleophiles. Uh, but if you have these bulky bases, it's going to be doing, it's going to be making the Hoffman product. Okay, let's look at the next category, which is going to be your um, weak base and strong nucleophiles. So now we are in the category of having weak bases but you can have a strong nucleophile. And some of the examples that you're going to be seeing typically would be like Cl minus, SH minus, and I can talk about uh, uh, I minus, Br minus, um, N3, 1 minus. I can have some of the neutrals, uh, neutral uh, bases. There are weak bases, but they are still considered to be relatively uh, good nucleophiles are going to be NH3 or even amines or even like H2S. Those are going to be some of the good nucleophiles there. And uh, I can talk about uh, CN minus there or even F minus there. So this CN minus and F minus, um, all of these guys, they don't really have a same basic strength. Some of these uh, weak bases are going to be relatively stronger than the other ones. But when you have these guys, they like to act as nucleophiles more than they will be acting as a base. So that's why we put those in the category of weak bases. But if I want to compare with iodide and chloride and comparing those with cyanide or fluoride, well, obviously your cyanide and fluoride is going to be stronger bases than those chlorides and iodide. But even with that condition, your cyanide fluorides, they like to act as nucleophiles than bases in those cases. So if I'm doing this SN, I'm running this uh, primary alkyl halides, which is capable of doing either SN2 or E2. Remember, your E2 is going to take place if you have only a strong base. But we don't have a strong base here, so this is only going to be doing an SN2 mechanism now. Okay, and when we look at uh, this uh, secondary alkyl halide, so again, we don't really have a strong base here, so they are still going to be doing an SN2 mechanism there. 
As far as this actually go, having a strong ba uh, strong nicophile and secondary alkyl halides, you will see an SN2 for the most part. Occasionally, you may see an SN1 here, and sometimes it really depends on the type of solvent you use. And if you're using something called an, a, a polar aperitic solvent, then you're going to be, for the most part, ref uh, then you're going to be favoring SN2 mechanism. But if you have a polar protic solvent, then in that particular case, you're going to be using, or you're going to be doing this through SN1 mechanism. In these cases, when you have secondary alkyl halides, you also want to keep an eye off on your solvents because that's when the solvents most matter in case of secondary alkyl halides because that's when you can have either SN1 or SN2. If in case of tertiaries, it's always SN1. In case of primaries, it's always SN2 when you're just comparing the substitution reactions. As far as your tertiary alkyl halide go, remember your tertiary alkyl halide is going to be doing only an E2, SN1, and E1, but remember, I don't really have a strong base. Since it's a strong nucleophile, it's going to be doing only an SN1. Typically, during an, for an SN1 reaction, you all, you use a weaker nucleophile, but that doesn't necessarily mean you don't you can't really use a strong nucleophile. You can also use a strong nucleophile for the cases of your uh, SN1 mechanisms. So in this case, there's not going to be any E2, uh, there's not going to be any SN2 mechanism, and nor there are going to be any E1 mechanism relatively because you got a stronger nucleophile here. If you have a E1, that's going to be a very minor product in this particular case. Now, this last one, when we have these um, weak base, weak nucleophile, and uh, some of the common examples are going to be water, you can have methanol, and you can have ethanol. All right, so these guys, when we have um, the S, when we have a primary alkyl halide, um, obviously primary alkyl halides can't really do an um, SN1 and E1, and SN2 is going to be favored with a strong nucleophile. But since you have a weak nucleophile in this case, these reactions are not very practical. If you let those run for like, let's say 10 days, it may work. And if, if that works, it, that's going to be through SN2 mechanism still, because you can't really have an SN1 mechanism here. But these are not very practical. They're not, they're going to take forever to run. So it's, you, you always want to avoid doing those type of reactions. Now, when we're looking at this uh, secondary alkyl halides, now secondary alkyl halides can do, since you have a weak nucleophile and weak base here, it can do either a SN1 or it can do either an E1 mechanism. Now, the question is, when are you going to have an SN1 as your major and when are you going to have an E1 as your major? And always keep in mind, they're both going to tag along whether you get, uh, you know, one favored over the other one. You're always going to have the other one as your minor product. However, you can always kind of pick one to be the major than the other one. Now, you will see an SN1 mechanism being taken place if you do this at a room temperature. But if you heat this particular reaction, then it's going to be... an E1 mechanism, and that's exactly what we're going to have in case of uh, uh, tertiary alkyl halides as well. So in tertiary alkyl halides, you have the capabilities of doing either SN1 here or E1, and SN1 will take place at room temp, and E1 will take place when you have uh, the heat involved. And obviously, I'm talking about those being majors there, right? So this is going to be the major product if you have at the room temp and if you have the heat involved, then E1 is going to be your major product. So this is going to be your overall big picture of all of your uh, different four different types of mechanisms there. And obviously, the very first thing students always get stuck into to figure out what particular mechanism this is going to be going in. 